Hello and welcome to Bell Ride. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I can't even tell you. Ever since I did the playtest of this, I have been wanting to get back into Bell Ride. And today is the day. Let's go. New game. All right, characters. Do they have any more? A little bit. They have a little bit more of characters. So I have an efficient plan started. I've, of course, played it and did a lot of uh, research on how things were working and everything of how to do things well and since the playtest i watched probably i don't know at least a dozen other streams and videos of people that played the game and like took notes and learned from what they did too to try and figure out the best start now of course some things are going to be changed because they made adjustments since public test based on all the feedback and everything and so I'm gonna have to see how things are adjusted and adjust my plan accordingly. I know one of the things that they've made major changes on is the food system. And so we'll have to see what's different in that now. I know the food lasts longer, it doesn't spoil as easily. Bellwright uses a directional combat system, which I have not done before and so that's, that's going to be my weakness in this game, is getting accustomed to using a directional combat system, um, similar to Mountain Blade. Isn't it funny how one small decision can have consequences that ripple through history? Or are we victims of a predetermined path? Was it chosen for you? The day you visited your favorite woods on your 10th birthday? Was it destiny that the royal family were hunting there at the same time? From a tree on high, you watched as Prince Voldar and Princess Osen laughed, talked, and tracked wild animals without a care in the world. And you watched in helpless horror as a stray arrow bolted through the trees, hitting the prince in the chest like a lightning strike. Just like that, the prince was dead. And when the princess found you standing over her brother's dead body, it felt as though the gods were playing a cruel trick on you all. In the panic and confusion, you ran from the scene as fast as your legs would carry you. Fueled by rage and grief, the king demanded the head of any child who fit your description. Fearing for your life, your father asked a friend to bring you far away. Away from the king's wrath. In the middle of the night, you were taken from your home and brought away on horseback. In tears, you called out to your mother, but it was too late. Your old life was over. For years, you hid from the royal family, your resentment growing. You heard stories of your homeland, the rise and fall of a rebellion, the death of the king, and the reign of the evil Queen Osen. But. On the eve of your 20th birthday, your guardian, the man who smuggled you out of Carvinia and kept you safe all these years, was brutally killed by a mysterious assassin. As he died in your arms, his hand clutched a coin with a strange sigil emblazoned upon it, a clue. Now, you have returned to your homeland for answers through choice or through fate, vengeance would be yours. But how will you fare in a land you no longer recognize? Woohoo! Let's go! I love that story. That is so intense. Oh my gosh, am I right? What's the mystery going on? I want to know. <gasps> Here we are! Yes! We're in Bell Right! Ah, welcome back! Welcome back! I've missed you! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be back. I'm like, ah, really hyped. 
I, I, I have not been this hyped for the start of a game price since Valheim. I'm so excited. The lowlands are the poorest of the five regions and one of the oldest, its occupants, relying mainly on agriculture for their livelihood. Due to the scourge, the people are barely producing enough to sell, let alone to keep for themselves. The current controlling Lord Ashburn is cruel. Okay, I have a quick start guide that I have prepared. We'll have to adjust it according to the changes, but I'm going to keep moving because we got a competition going on here. Herndine is believed to be the oldest settled village in the lowlands, but conflict was sown into its very foundation. Look at where you're going, Christy. Within years of its establishment, the settlers of Herndine became divided on the growth of their village. Some wanted to expand north, while others wanted basically to stay there. Okay, what am I doing? Where's the entrance to this tower? There's this tower right here behind us. We're going to go in here. I have everything written out in a dock of the steps that I've planned for the most efficient start. And this list of the most efficient start is going to be available for uh, members of the channel. If you're a member on YouTube or on Patreon, you'll be able to get this. I mean, obviously I'm going to be doing videos on it, but it's the checklist that members will be able to get. Okay, so here's your first tip. When you get food, I've seen a lot of people just opening the menu to eat it, but you can assign it to quick keys to quick slots. So you can use quick keys to eat. You don't have to open your menu every time to eat something. See now it's in slots four and five. It's not putting it there, it's assigning that thing, that food or bandage or potion to that slot. And it'll show how many you have in your inventory. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna run really slow right now See, that's running it's not a big difference but it's just because I don't have my skills built up yet okay am I gonna pick up I'm not I'm not gonna get everybody picks up that rock I'm not gonna get it yet because that's not the first thing that I need so I'm heading to the village to talk to the elder and I'm gonna try to pick up some sticks on the way I'm already too close to the village I mean, I can get them on the south side, too. Herndeen! Yay! Look, the people in the village. Hello, friends. Hello, beggar. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk, Dobrin. I think we need to talk, Traveler. You're a new face around here, and new faces showing up rarely ends well for this village. I have a duty to my village first and foremost. I need to know who you are and why you came here. I'm going to do different answers this time. Everybody's polite. I'm going to be a little bit rude and see what happens. Excuse me? I have done nothing to offend you. Yeah. You could also be a spy or a bandit looking for information to use against us. Speaking openly can be a death sentence these days. As long as you're asking questions, you're putting us in danger. Looking for trouble? No, I'm not looking for trouble. I must admit, Keep I didn't going. expect such a frosty reception. What am I supposed to do now? That is not my problem or Hayendine's problem. Go build yourself a shelter somewhere if you insist on staying in the lowlands. Come back when you're set up and maybe you can earn your keep. I will do it. So be it. Woohoo! My first mission. Okay. Whoa. Always makes me jump when that first one comes up. Okay, buildings and construction. Build your first shelter, a shack. To do so, press B to open the construction menu, then select shack and place it on the ground. Each construction requires resources to build it. Building shacks shouldn't be a problem for you, but later on, hired villagers will help you out with more complex constructions. You cannot place buildings too close to existing villages, so it's a big decision where to put it because of where resources are and such. Okay, we're gonna go this way. I'm gonna go over here to build our shack. Oh, I'm getting tired so fast. Did I actually eat the food? Helps if you hit the right key. 
Okay, so I've eaten my food, so I have more stamina now. Look, they have adjusted it because it's showing how my health changed when I ate this time. It wasn't showing a difference last time. It only showed a difference for your stamina. I'll have to look in more detail at what that is. Okay, so to build our first shack, we're going to need 10 wood and six flax. This is too close, isn't it? Yeah. We can't get stuff from too close, so we're gonna go just south. And I'm gonna do something a little bit weird because I'm gonna build a temporary shack. It's not really a temporary shack, it's more of a shack that I'm only gonna use occasionally. So I'm gonna build a shack right here, south of the village. This is not gonna be my home. This is gonna be where I can use it to sleep through the night if I need to because the villagers, including the elder, go to sleep at night and if I need to turn in a quest and they're all in bed, I have to wait until the next day. Six slacks. Okay, now I need wood. I have to pick up sticks. And so if I have a shack here, I can just sleep through the night here without having to go home or without having to pay for a room at the inn. I don't want to pay for a room at the inn. I want to be able to use my money for the things I want to for, which right now is primarily going to be books, because books equal knowledge and learning, and that helps raise our skills, the skills of us and the skills of our villagers. How many do I have? Seven. I need three more. I'm also going to need some to make an axe. I could, I, you know, I could have picked up that first rock because I am going to need a rock to build my axe. Okay, let's see how close we can get. Here's our personal shack. They also added this over here, plus 60. This is showing you how much renown you get when you place a building. Okay, that's too far. So, there's the road. Let's just step backwards. Oh, look, right there. I would not recommend building here permanently if you don't want to fight bandits a lot because I'm so close to the road. I could go further over that way and it would be fine, but bandits do walk along the road. So I'm putting my resources in there. Now I'm going to build my shack. I love how it does this piece by piece. At first I thought it was a little odd. I wasn't sure about it. But now I like it because it's like you're actually seeing it be built piece by piece. And it's really cool later on too when the villagers are doing it because it's like very realistic. You can see the things being built in the town like going up. It's really cool. I like it better than like Medieval Dynasty. It kind of has a similar system but it, it's so bright the temporary built parts it's like we have this crude old world environment and then the half built things are like glowing like no man's sky parts or something this is much more immersive i think huzzah strack strack i can't talk shack constructed okay cool this shack will provide a personal space to keep you along with a private chest I don't know if it's said that before, but it does now. So yeah, there's a private chest in here. You can put things in that your villagers can't get things out. You can kind of hide things in there if you don't want them to use something. Um, they change something. Where's my workbench? Uh, did they change that there's not a workbench on here now? That's going to make a huge difference. The shack will provide a personal list. Okay, it used to have a workbench. Is it separate now? Yes, okay, okay. So it's separate now. Simple workbench. It's gonna need five wood, three flax, and three stone. But I kinda like that actually because I have a plan for something I wanna try. To protect my uh, private chest from raiders and having the workbench separate will really help with that. A little bit more flax, 
They've made the flax easier to see as well. And um, they've dispersed it on the map more. Oops. Just to get the bell, ding. But I'm just gonna grab some. Health and injuries. Sleeping restores your HP fully. When you or your companion lose a battle, they respawn but become injured for a certain amount of time. When they lose again before healing, they die forever. Injuries apply various negative effects. It's very sad. You can also restore your HP from using bandages and eventually potions. Okay, I need a few stones. I'm just grabbing a little bit of food, like berries or mushrooms along the way right now. I'm not going to grab a huge amount of them. Because even though they're not going to spoil as fast as they did before, I don't need to carry more than I can use. Mushrooms. Ding. Wait a minute. Quick craft. This is new. There was no quick craft before. What? Hold to craft? <gasps> That's genius! I love that! You can quick craft a simple axe, a torch, or a primitive club. <gasps> yes, please! I'll go ahead and make a primitive club. Hold to craft. And look how quick it is! Don't have to like stand in the menu for the quick craft. That was a lot faster, even though I don't have any crafting skills yet. One and two are your hands. And then three is your back slot for like your bow or something or your shield. Wow. I feel so advanced now. Okay. You ready to go and talk to him? Let me look. Which direction am I going? I wanna avoid the bandits. I want to uncover things between Herndine and Padstow. Actually, I could just follow that road down looking for to find things along that way. I'm going to zoom out on my mini-map. Three and nine on the keypad. Zooms in and out on your mini-map. Look, my stamina is beyond my health right now, so they're showing a difference as well. Ah, found stone. Ding. It dings every time you find a new material. I'm going to get some extra ones because I want to be able to make an axe for myself and an axe for my first helper. I'm keeping my eye on the mini-map because there's a bandit camp just south of here. Okay. And then I'm going to quick craft a simple axe. Yay! Look how fast that was! Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Docking Crew, for increasing that at the beginning, even though we don't have skills yet. Okay, I have enough stone to make my helper an axe on the way back to... A lot of times you can find sticks under, like they fell off the trees. Wow, can y'all hear the wind? It's, it's so cool. Oh, it sounded like a bee. Ah, <gasps> hemp. Where am I at on the map? Am I um? Am I where I think I am? Show sage. It doesn't show. There it is, hemp. Okay, so I like to keep track of hemp because it's not as easy to find, or it wasn't before. Maybe they have made it easier to find now. They have distributed flax more. I wonder if they did that with other things too. I'm not going to fill up my inventory with it, though. So we can go and talk to the Elder tomorrow. So since the workbench is separate, actually, I may not even need to build it here. Like, I help people to understand the games? Thank you very much. That's one of my goals. I try to be very helpful in adding tips and tricks and giving guides and that kind of thing to help people out and try to be clear and to the point not a bunch of fluff and nonsense wow it's raining they're showing us that there was rain in the game <laughs> i see the rain i like how you can see the effect of the stamina and health separately uh where am i going you're going the wrong direction christy go this way 
spoiled food. Yep. It still spoils, but that definitely was not as fast. It's on fire. Is this the expanded camp? Yeah, I think so. And I'm not gonna, gonna talk to him right now. I'm too close to the village. Okay, let's go talk to Dobron. Oh, Dobron! Mm. I want to talk to all the villagers, but you can if you want for fun, but I'm gonna keep moving because you can't get a mission okay. from them until you finish this part. You again. I still have things to do. I need to do here. Nothing has changed since yesterday. Get to the point. He doesn't want to work with us anymore, but Herndeen mostly depends on him to provide. I want you to convince him to deliver traps. If you can bring us rabbit fur too, that would be very much appreciated. Um, I'll see what I can do. Where do I find the hunter? If anyone can okay, I'll talk to the Amelie. Right That's what Let's I'll do. Okay, where's Amelie? I am going to zoom in on my mini map. See if I can see her. There she is. Oh, Amelie, no where are lose. you, friend? I think she's going to end up being our friend. Although, she's a little sus in some ways. A little fishy. But I think she's going to be our friend. <sighs> I think she knows more than she's telling us. Okay, she has a thing over her head. That means, talk to her. Gre greetings, newcomer. Say, have we met before? Your face is awfully familiar. See, what does that mean? Have we met before? I am, what can I do for you? Lubomir. I, I need to find him. He's in the forest, just up the hill, not far from the village. Okay, so I gotta go find Lubomir. And he's gonna be over this way. And on the way to talk to Lubomir, I need to pick up a stick so I can make him an axe. Because Lubomir is gonna become my first villager. Their village hunter. If you follow down this road, you're gonna find this shrine. You're gonna be very tempted to get the stuff out of it. Don't do it yet. I mean, you can. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you want to do the most efficient start to the game, wait. Because it's gonna fill up your inventory with a lot of stuff. Let's make a simple axe now. Hello, Lubomir. Are you Lubomir? Haven't you heard about wolves? Um, wolves and bandits looking in the area. Are the bandits riding on the wolves or something? He doesn't find this funny. I'm gonna say, Elder Dobron sent me. He asked for traps if you have them. The people of Herndine need them. If you're worried about my well-being, then you should help me. I need traps and rabbit fur. At one point, he said he'd speak to the brigands about my behavior. <sighs> that does sound rough. Can we cooperate? Yes. I think it's possible. I'll come back after I've built you a shelter. Okay, here's where it's going to get interesting. I am not going to build a shelter next to where I put my tent. I put my little shack there because I want to be able to have a place to spend the night if I need to. But I'm going to build his house over where I'm going to build my actual first village. Now, I have a general rough idea of where I want to do this. Let me get some flax. I'm going to need it for his house. But I need to scope it out a little bit. Okay, so I am going to go over to this road. See, here's Herndeen, and there's this road going down here. And here's Padstow over here. I'm going to be looking in this area over here. There's a big crossroads right here. Now, I may have to deal with this bandit's encampment. I'm going to try to stay kind of out of their way. Because I suck at combat. Get my axe out just in case I trigger them. I wonder if they've changed some things about the map. See this way some. I mean, I could walk on the actual road, but this way. Look at all the rabbits. This is where I'm going to be getting rabbits. Oh, bad guy's over there. Walking down the road. So if you want to fight bandits on a regular business, regular basis to get their rewards, build near the road. If you don't want to, then build a little bit farther away from the road. Can I get him? No! <laughs> I mean, the odds are very low. Oh! Do it again. Do it again. I'm ready for you now. Come on. Do it again. 
There's no sneak in the game. <laughs> okay. More left. <gasps> they changed it! Thank you, Donkey Crew! Yay! Look at the mini-map! When I turn my camera of where I'm looking, the indicator on the mini-map changes and shows the direction that I'm looking for where I want to take off. Oh, halla freaking luya. That is amazing. Before you had to actually turn your character for the indicator on your mini-map to change. Like, you have to, like, move your feet for it to change of which direction you want to walk next. And it works. I think that was one of my suggestions. Hee <laughs> hee! That makes me very happy. Very, very happy indeed. It's more like the Valheim mini-map. Works really well. Okay. This is the area in general that I want to build. So, there's a lake over there with a merchant. There's a big open space field here with plants. That lake is also going to have a resource that, uh, riverines. So I have to go as far as the other lake. And there's woods here. There's all kinds of good. There's garlic in this area, which a lot of people had trouble finding. There's mining stuff in this area. There's big enough woods for logging. Yeah. This is the area I am going to build. Okay, so I just need to figure out, according to the topology, how I'm going to do the layout. I think that I want my house to be up on this hill. It's really close to that banding camp, but me and Lubomir are going to take them out. And then the town can extend over this way, all the way around. We'll be taking me to build a housing tent. This provides shelter for two settlers. Nine wood, six flex, two logs. Okay. I want them to be around the cooking area. I'm going to be using these woods for logging. And traps over here in the village extending this way, I think. I know it's kind of weird. I'm talking about this and the map is not uncovered yet. But <laughs> trust me. <laughs> There's a boar, too. Some people never saw a boar. There's some boar. They start on the other side of this road. And over by a bridge over there. I also want to keep the... I'm going to put my house a little bit. Like, just a tad farther away from their houses. Because I have a trick I want to try. And see if it works. For protecting my private storage during raids. I don't know if it'll work. Can you boot people out of your village if they get annoying? Yes, you can. And you will get some of your renown back if you do that. So, um, in order to recruit people to your village, there's different factors that go into play of whether they will come and live in your village. Ooh. One of the primary things is the amount of renown that you have. So, if you look in the top left, I have 22 coins, and then there's a 60, and that's the amount of renown that I have. Oh, and so it costs a certain amount of renown for different villagers, depending on the villager. There's a lot of factors that go into that. I actually need to do a whole video on that. I think a lot of people were confused about that before. Young trees oh. give you wood. Oh. Big trees give you logs. Oh. Ooh. Is it multiplayer? Hi, Nicholas. Yes, it is co-op up to four people right now. I could put my axe away, so I stopped doing that. I love how they have real animations for everything, too. Like, your axe doesn't just disappear. You actually put it in your belt. And you actually take it out. They, like, do so much stuff to make this seem real and immersive. It's really cool. You actually see it and like you actually see what the villagers are doing when they're doing stuff for you. Like if they're collecting berries, they're carrying a straw basket full of berries. Okay, so this is a housing tent. You can manage your settlers here, although you typically don't really need to because it'll automatically assign someone to a housing tent. You have two per thing. They also have their own storage here. 50 spots. That's as much as your initial chest. And so when we get to building things, we are, um, we're not going to build a chest initially because we've got to be efficient and fast. And that's just the same as having one until later when we need more. 
Okay, so I am going to go ahead and put down... Whoops, that's the wrong thing. Don't put that down. A personal shack for me. Online. You want to keep a little bit of space around things anyway, so your villagers have room to walk in between. Look at the butterflies. Hello, Lubomir. Can we talk? News? Is my new home ready? Yes, I'm ready. You can join me. Now you can teach me how to build traps and how they work. Oh, now can you teach me? Okay, so now we're able to hire Lubomir, and it gives us his stats. And what's funny about this is that he is the hunter for the village, right? Look, his hunting skill is zero out of six. <laughs> this cracks me up. He's the hunter, but he's not a very good hunter. <laughs> so down here it shows how much renown is required to hire him which is 53 and we have 60 from the things that we've done so far which was building that stuff well no wonder he was fired exactly <laughs> okay so his harvesting is two of six which is probably better than mine at this point um <clears throat> So, Lubomir, he can't go as high as is possible, which is 10, but he has the ability to make, like, decent halfway progress in everything. So, he's going to become my jack-of-all-trades, especially until I can get better villagers. Sorry, Lubomir. Higher skilled. Sorry, Lubomir. He is a prodigy, though, so he learns things quickly. Build the research desk for me, and then I will show you how it's done. Excellent. Oh, and remember that once we build them, you should place it in dense forests to increase the chance of catching something. Will do. Let's go. Your villagers. Your villagers can be assigned to one of three roles at any given time. A worker fulfills your crafting and production orders in the settlement. A companion travels with you and follows your commands. A guard patrols and defends your settlement from danger. You can command your companions by giving them contextual orders with E to attack, harvest, and move. Try it yourself. It is vital that you and your villagers stay well fed. Going hungry will cause your companions, workers, and guards to stop what they are doing in order to find food. The better the food, the longer they can work. Okay, so he is now my companion, which means he's going to follow me around. Next time we're going to start with how to get your companion to do what you want them to do, even while you're walking along, like picking up sticks or mushrooms or looting the corpses of your fallen enemies. Make sure to free subscribe for more Bell Right. Until next time, happy gaming.